So this is the Kato HO Scale Unitrack three color train signal. And here you can see on top, we have the three lights right there, a cone on top, a little platform underneath. And here's what it looks like from the side view. So you can see it's kind of like two poles, like a black one and a white one together. And it is on the left hand side of the tracks. We've got a ladder to access the signal. And there's also this mechanism here on the tracks. It's actually detailed itself like a grilled pattern. And there is a piece of metal that sticks out. It's actually spring loaded. So when a car approaches, they can activate the signal automatically. You should also note the ballast around the signal tower actually sticks out. It's like a bulge. There are also tiny holes in the corners for the wires to stick out. And by the way, here's what it looks like on the bottom. There also is the switch if you want to have DCC. So apparently to make this signal function, you need a power pack and adapter, which says right there in Japanese, but I don't have that. So I guess it's just gonna be decoration this time. So here is the Kato 90 degree crossing where two tracks intersect at a right angle. And here's what it looks like in the back, which there are a lot of tiny holes throughout. And here's what it looks like from the side profile view. Got the Kato Unitrack adapters. And they look pretty identical from each side. And here's what it looks like from the top view. There's this plastic piece and there's spacing between each rail. So here is the Kato Unitrack end with the bumper and here's what it looks like underneath it. You see these little pegs. I suppose you could take them out. And after the railroad tracks end, there is this nice slope, which feels pretty smooth. I've also noticed that these two last railroad ties, they are closer together. So they're not all the same exact tie. And here's a closer view of the bumper design. It's pretty nice and simple, but there was a little bit of detail there. A little ball or screw connecting the piece together. And here's what it looks like on the back. It also does come with this sign, which you could stick at the end of the tracks. It has these four arrows. So I guess that signals the end of the tracks. And the base is also oblong shaped, so it can fit easier in the hole right after the bumper. So since I got another HV2 to expand my tracks, I decided to make another shunted game video where I write the names of all the cars and assemble them in a randomly generated consist order. Alright, so here is the final consist. So first off, we have the coal car, the Autorack, and the TTX box car. Now these are great since the Autorack and the TTX are in the right order, and the coal car is in the front as well, right there. Alright, so it looks like we got our first three cars out of the way. Now we've got the DODX and the center beam flat car, which is in the back right there by itself. That's good. But the DODX military train that is actually right behind the Conrail Hopper and the Caterpillar. So new change of plans. I'm going to connect the Conrail Hopper with the reefer right there in the back. So these two together. Then I'll move my DODX with the center beam flat car. Alright, so we got the first two, now we need the caterpillar. All 
All right, so we got these three squared away and also these Conroe and the Reefer, that's also squared away. Now we're left with the UP Hopper and the WM CSX Boxcar. It's a problem since they're opposite of where they should be, so I'm just gonna move these Boxcar and connect it with the Hopper. All right, so the hopper is now in place. Now we've got to assemble the whole train. Alright, so for this video, I just bought a bunch of things to add to my train layout just to make it more interesting than just the curve. I'm a big fan of the 90 degree crossover tracks that is pretty cool and makes a nice clickety clack sound. The signal, although it was not working because I didn't know it, but you needed two more accessories, the power supply and an adapter. So that will be for another video. Stay tuned for that. But still, it is pretty cool as a static display it looks nice in the background. As for the bumpers, I think they look pretty neat. They make the end of the track 
look a lot more realistic than just the end of the snapjack. It has a nice sloping gradient. And the bumper itself, it does a pretty good job of stopping a train. The bumper does line up with rail cars usually, but for locomotives, the plow may catch it before even hitting the bumper. And if you want to see the full unboxing of the HV, do check out my other video about that. And I bought all of these from trainworld.com. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hopefully next time we'll get that signal working. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you had already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.